Today's show is pre recorded. Like a million bucks, but things in its cups. Mm-hmm. Y'all tell me who could it be for Steve Harvey? Oh, yeah. Everybody out there listening to me. Mm-hmm. Put your hands together for Steve Harvey. Put your hands together. Oh, Good morning, everybody. You're listening to The Voice. I said, come on now, dig me, the one and only Steve Harvey. Got a radio show. Okay, now I'm going to be really honest with you this morning. I really don't know what to say. I really don't. Um, I was sitting here and I was thinking, what do I say today? I do know that I want to be encouraging uplifting and inspirational in some way to affect somebody today. Oftentimes these conversations that I have in the mornings, they're designed with me because <laughs> I, 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 I need it myself, y'all, to be honest with you. I mean, you know, who, who makes the comedian laugh, I used to say all the time. And even though what, what we talk about in the morning is not a laughing matter, it kind of like is, is where I am today. You know, I, I need motivation in my life sometimes myself. I think when I get in moments like this, I, I often res, resort back to the same thing over and over and over. And when I find myself in, in certain predicaments, I can always fall back on the same thing over and over. So while I'm sitting here trying to figure out what to say to you, the the one thing that I did do this morning that I find to be very consistent in me is that I find myself grateful. I'm ever grateful for the things that God has done for me. I may not always know what to say, but I know how to say thank you. I do. I know how to remember and reflect back on where I come from. I know how to realize where all my blessings come from. I, I, I'm very, very conscious of my journey that I've been on, the, the one that was from then until now. That journey right there, is, is, it's, been, it's, been, it's, been, uh, it's been difficult, man. It really, really has. I, I ain't going to lie to you. Um, me becoming successful was very difficult. But as hard as this is to say, I really, really mean this. I wouldn't change nothing about the trip I've been on. Number one, because I can't change anything about it. 
So I never lived my life in regret. But the main thing is, was I discovered along the way, now, not during the process, when you're going through rough moments, you can't hardly see the good in it at the time. It's just rough for you. It seems unexplainable, and oftentimes I thought it was unfair. But as I am now, I needed every single thing that happened to me, that happened to me, to happen to me. I hope that makes sense to you. I needed everything to happen in the exact order and the exact way that it happened in order for me to be the person that I've become. And that right there, man, is is just very comforting to me. Bishop Jakes told me one time, he said, the closer you get to God, the more friendly you all become, the more he will reveal to you uh, the how comes and the what fors of a lot of things that's happened to you. Because a lot of times what troubles us is we just can't understand why we lost that loved one back then. We just can't understand why we didn't get what we wanted back then. We just don't understand how come our plan didn't work out and we had to fail so miserably back then. We don't understand the answers to these things. Well, the closer I've gotten to God, the more those explanations have become crystal clear to me. And see, the one thing that I came to the realization, everybody, is that the things that was happening to me, they wasn't really all bad. They really wasn't. That. They, they didn't taste good when it was happening. I didn't enjoy what I was going through. But as I look back on them and reflect now, it wasn't all bad. Some of those things were so necessary for me to get the information. Because, see, I don't know about you, but I'm kind of hard-headed and stubborn. I said, I don't know about you, but I'm kind of hard-headed and stubborn. I kind of like to think that I know something about some things every now and then. And the things I am convinced about, I don't really, really care for people trying to talk me off mine. So I can be stubborn and hard-headed sometimes. God knows that about me. So I think to get some of the messages crystal clear through to me that I needed to learn, That was this process I had to go through. That process was my journey. It was my trip. It was my woe, my pain. See, everybody got them different. It don't matter what it is. Everybody got a woe. Everybody got a pain. Everybody got a trial. Everybody got some tribulations. Everybody got some challenge. I don't care who you are. Just quit looking at me thinking that I got it going on so tough. But Steve, yeah, it's easy for you to say that, but you ain't here. You don't know where I've been. If you would stop hanging yourself up on your past, worrying about your woes and your troubles and the situation you in and start praying and start asking God to get you through it. See, a lot of times you messed it. You you messed the message up yourself because when you're going through some stuff, you ask God to remove it and take it away. That ain't the lesson you got to learn. Your lesson sometimes has got to it's got to be how to be strong, how to see it through how to bear under it, how to carry that weight long distances for long periods of time. That's how you get strong. The lesson is is to make you stronger, but to make you stronger, you got to carry the weight. You can't get stronger, you don't go to the gym, or you don't do something at your house to lift your own body weight. See, a lot lot of people can't even do push-ups. They they can't get down and in the course of a day give you 100 push-ups. Because they ain't, they, ain't, they ain't never tried it. They, about, they get to 20 and they tr- shake it so bad they stop. Woo, that's too much for me. Well, let me tell you something. So I learned to quit praying to take stuff away. My prayer became to give me the strength to handle it. People oftentimes ask me, how do you do all that you do in the course of the day? I don't really know. I just know I can. Because I know God don't put more on you than you can bear. So when you ask me how you do all of what you do in the course of the day, I got God. God is good. He'll get you through whatever it is you're going through. So when you're tripping and you don't know what to say, reflect and be grateful for all you reflect on. Think about God's goodness and watch what he do for you. 
That's the cold part, okay? You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. I've got sunshine on a cloudy day when it's cold outside. I got the month of May. Well, I guess you say, I guess you say, what can make me feel this way? There you go. Come I'm on. I'm talking Dave. about my girl. <laughs> I'm talking about my girl. My girl. I've got so much. <laughs> Boy. <laughs> Honey. Boy, that touched me. Did that hurt? I, you that, just no, did no. That, no. That touched me. Oh, okay. <laughs> Touching and hurting me is different. That had an effect on the way the rest of my day is going to go. I've got so much, boy. I just touched myself again. I'm not doing this for you. I'm doing this to get my day started. And if you ain't feeling me, that's okay. We'll have another show tomorrow. (laughs) My motto is if you don't like the show today, Praise God if he give us tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, mm-hmm. Shirley Strawberry, Carla Pharrell, <laughs> Mississippi Monica, Junior, Kill Spates, uh-huh. Nephew Tommy, and yours truly. Junior, oh, what? <laughs> what Come on. Uh, I, I got to understand it. I, I don't know. How does, how does hard singing do that for you? Well, you know, <laughs> it's the emotion of it. Yeah. It ain't the notes. It Clearly. ain't the connectivity. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Yes. How does this work? It's the feeling. Okay. Hmm. It's a feeling, Junior. Yeah. You know, I'm gonna play something for you a little bit later on, and then you tell me. Okay. You know. Okay. How you feel about it? Something that you can relate to. I and got then, you. And then, and then we'll see. But it's always the emotion of it, mm-hmm. you know. And you've got to, you've got to, uh, you know. I think, Junior, you got to lend yourself to that a little bit more often. Because I'm yeah. not sure if you do. That's what you said. Like, I just saw the, the look on your face and everything. It was all on your counter. You, you was gone. I have to. I leave here when I do that. <laughs> I <laughs> enter the realm yeah. of, oh, my Lord. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my Lord. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to oh, find my. something. Mm-hmm. What that nephew? you can relate to. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh my. looking for something. <laughs> oh, you're here, man. I found it. Now, Junior, you can relate to this right here. Here we go. Mm-hmm. Sorry. <laughs> away from me. Man. <laughs> Life. <laughs> now, let me play it a little Life. bit louder. Sorry. <laughs> away from me. Away from me. I, now, those are professional singers. <laughs> Uh-huh. Who they didn't give a damn about the note either. <laughs> <laughs> it was the All feeling, right. Junior. <laughs> All right, listen. Coming up at 32 minutes after the hour, we're going to start the show off with Nephew Tommy's Run That Prank Back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Time now to start your morning off with Run That Prank Back with the Nephew. What you got, Neff? Huh? You heard me. What you huh? got? What you want me to do? What is it? How you want it done? What you running back? Stupidity. I'm running it back. We want Stupidity. it done. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he knows. That. Okay. Yeah, that's obvious, okay. Right? Okay. Okay. I'm like, you know that. that you know, there's levels to it. You know, y'all. Uh-huh. You know. You understand. Know, one to ten, A to Z. Yesterday. All right. Calm down, ageless. I got it. I got it. Just trying to speed you along. <laughs> Thank you. And, you know, I- take the same amount of time on the new prank. <laughs> Don't hate. Catering mistake. Catering mistake. Cat yeah, dog, if you would. Uh... <laughs> we gonna be extra ignorant today. Come on, cat dog. Hello. Hello. I'm trying to reach Tammy, please. Uh, this is she. Hey, Tammy. This is uh, uh Dexter. Um, over here at the <laughs> catering. We catered your uh. 
your Aunt Bridget's uh, Yeah, that's birthday. right. That's right. That's right. How you doing, Dexter? It's good to hear from you. Okay, good, good. I'm uh, going through the uh, paperwork here, and I know we have uh, an invoice for you all. I wanted to reach out to you. This is not a bad time, is it? No, this is a good time. Okay. So, first of all, did everybody enjoy uh, everything that we, we put out for you guys? Yeah, we had a good old time. <laughs> My auntie Bridget, <laughs> she was so happy. There was no better way to bring in her 60th birthday party. We had a great time. The food was delicious. We are so grateful. So thank you so much. You and your team did a bomb job. Okay, good deal, good deal. I, I, I was here when they loaded up the van and everything, and I wanted to make sure I wanted to follow back up. But listen, I'm looking at the paperwork, and, I'm, and the, we had a little mishap. And I wanted mm -hmm. to let you know that we're not going to um, we're not going to charge you guys for the chicken uh, uh, because okay. uh, they, they made a mistake and uh, they put the wrong pan on the van, and they uh, I noticed that the chicken was actually still here. So we <laughs> want to take off take that off, and I won't that won't be on the uh, on the invoice. So I'm taking all the the entire cost of the chicken will be completely taken out. Okay. Real quick, let's back up a bit because we had a lot of people at the party. We definitely had chicken. We had right. smothered well, chicken. Yeah, I know you had you ordered smothered chicken, but like I said, the guy put the wrong pan on the tr on the van, you know. And the, actually, the smothered chicken was actually still here, uh, you know, here here at the uh, at the shop. So, you know, like I said, we made a mistake. I'm gonna take it off, and that that'll probably knock your you knock a couple hundred dollars off of off of you all's price. I hold on, hold on, Dexter. So, so what are you saying? So, what were we eating if it wasn't some other chicken? <laughs> what was it? Uh, well, Miss Tammy, like I say, the, 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 you know, I got on this kid for making this mistake. I, you know, I got on him real bad about it, but you know, putting the wrong pan on there. But like <sighs> I say, this what you guys had was it? That was a chicken. What was it though? That's what I'm asking you. What was it? That was that, actually what he put on there by mistake, Miss Tammy. That that was that was rabbit. What? <laughs> you can't be f serious right now. Are, are you out of your rabbit mind? Are you f serious? You're calling no, me to tell me that your team put the wrong tray on the f truck and then served it to my family, and you're trying to call me about two hundred dollars? Are you f serious? Well, oh, more than that. You owe me more than that. You don't know who the f is allergic to that, and you're calling me about two hundred dollars. Are you out of your f mind? Well, I, I, I wanted to credit you all that. You know what I'm saying? No, it ain't, it ain't gonna be no credit. It ain't gonna be no credit. It ain't no credit. F you mean credit? Bridget could have died. Monty could have died. Lucia. We got kids in there. You don't know our f dietary needs. Are you crazy? Well, I mean, but you say you liked it though. It don't matter if I f liked it. I can f fall out tonight, stupid. Oh, I'm getting okay. a f attorney. I'm done with this. This is f stupid. And who the f want to eat Bugs Bunny? Does that f right to you? Huh? Uh, Are you f stupid? I'm so f annoyed right now. Seriously. So we ain't no f woods people. We ain't no country f people. F wrong oh, with you. Okay, but but but, but y'all liked it though, right? No, but you gonna like my foot up your f though. That's what you gonna like. I'm gonna be there later, cause your is stupid. Your is stupid. My foot gonna be up your and your is gonna be hopping around like a rabbit. The rabbit that you served me. Okay, okay. Let me ask you this here now. Ava, Ava, Miss Ava is your mama, right? What the my mama got to do with this rabbit? What she got to do with this? Okay. See, your mama <laughs> got me to call you. This is nephew Thomas from the Steve Harvey Morning Show, baby. <laughs> <Tell me. laughs> Tell me, your mama ain't able to got me to pray for all of you. <laughs> I am so sorry. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is crazy. Oh, my God. Oh so my we God. ate chicken you... in. <laughs> you say, Good morning. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> Y'all are crazy. Y'all are going to get it. This is crazy.
There you have it, the catering mistake, ladies and gentlemen, the catering mistake. She was letting there you There is have none it. far more ignorant than I. There you have it. Yeah. No argument. Little there. rabbit in your system ain't going to bother you. Chicken and rabbit mistake is very possible, okay? Uh. Next time, same, next time you catering, get 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 the rabbit every now and then. Dip into the rabbit. See what... uh, rabbit does not taste like chicken. If your rabbit, rabbit tastes like your chicken, you can't uh-huh. cook chicken. You need to quit cooking chicken. But I would never cooker. cook rabbit. <laughs> no All right, damn. nephew. <laughs> Thank you. Coming up next, it is Ask the CLO with the Chief Love Officer Steve Harvey in the building, ready for your love questions right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour and trending headlines, former President Barack Obama tested positive for COVID-19. Plus, in entertainment news, Kanye calls out one of the kings of comedy. It is not true, Steve. It is D.L. Hughley. All right? Back up, uh, we'll talk. That's my dude yeah, right yeah. there now. Uh-huh. Wait a minute. Wow. Wait a minute. Yeah, yeah. we'll tell it. you about it. And did you see Will Smith's interview with Gail, Sk- Gail King? Will Smith said that he's never uh, been um, unfaithful in his marriage, and neither is Jada. There's no infidelity in their marriage. Excuse me? I thought it was open. Okay. I thought oh, it was open. I, I, he mu- so he must have missed right the now. red top interview. In table talk. In table talk. Yeah, yeah I, I am. I'm, I'm okay. Well, we'll talk about all of these stories at the top of the hour, but right now it is time to ask the CLO. Brittany in Louisiana writes My older sister is married to a man that is my age, and she talks to him like he's a child. He confided in me and asked if I could talk to her for him, and uh, I tried talking to her, and she accused me of wanting her husband. What did I do wrong here? You got in the marital business. Right, right. You're right. He, the young boy, should have never brought his marital troubles to you. And then you took his and her marital troubles back to her. That's what you did wrong. Mm-hmm. Stay out of people's marriage because it ain't going to ever work out. She married the boy that's your age, and he act like a boy. And he just went and told you. My mama in here talking to me crazy. Can you go in there and talk to her? And you took your ass in there and she done cut both of y'all out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if I was you, I'd be just as scared as your sister as he is. <laughs> 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 All right, moving on to Confused in Tampa. Uh, Confused says, I'm a 37-year-old married female, and I have a boyfriend on the side. Mm. I butt-dialed my boyfriend, and he held the phone as my husband, and I talked about the sex we had the night before. My boyfriend was upset, like he didn't know I still have sex with my husband. Is this a sign that it's time to cut him loose? Mm. Well, he didn't want to hear that. Well, I understand. He don't want to hear that, (laughs) you know, even though he know he hit he he is second place. He don't want to hear he is second. The male True ego that. is very fragile. Yes, it is. We can't hear this about nothing. And mm. um, your ass needs to quit cheating if you're gonna be butt dialing people. <laughs> you, <laughs> you got to Put get your that, phone up, yeah, man. You got to get that yeah. thing where you, as soon as you hang up, your phone cut off instantly. Yeah. You Usually, women are be. smarter cheaters than this. CLO. Well, why is she she getting busted? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But so what was she supposed to do, sir? Since you know so much. No, I'm just saying, you shut up. I'm just, you just saying. got you saying women are better at this. We're gonna tell her what y'all. Women, what we, what we, that's a, that's a known fact. I didn't well, make that up. Well, what should she fact. have done, Shirley? Yeah. She question. shouldn't have had her phone right there that she could butt dial it. That's all. Usually, women are smarter. We cover our track better. All of Absolutely, that. Absolutely, It's a Shirley. known fact. Yeah, it's a known fact. Up, girl. Don't don't get mad because because of, of the truth. Because we damn sure have our phone up. <laughs> yeah, she's an amateur right. with this. Yeah. She's a yes. with this. So 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 when you see a man sleep with the phone duct taped to his thigh, what is your <laughs> attitude for? <laughs> he is trying to protect you. <laughs> when you see the phone on the nightstand and the battery is somewhere else, hello, you know what he's doing. Yeah. 
<laughs> You're not getting busted yeah. by no blood <laughs> She sucks at cheating, so she needs yeah. to stop. Mm-hmm. She's an amateur. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. <laughs> Very new to this. All right, next question. Moving on to um, Amaris in uh, Philly. Amaris says, I'm living with a cousin to help her out financially while she's pregnant. Her deadbeat baby daddy has been staying at our house for the past week, so I told her he needs to chip in on some bills. She told me to mind my business. Should I move out? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. See, you staying with her to help her out. Uh huh. The deadbeat boyfriend that came over, now he draining the money too. You mm-hmm. go to her, she tell you stay in your business. Mm-hmm. Take you and all your business and money to and money and to another apartment, and then you ain't got to pay for nobody. That's Help right. yourself. Yeah. Damn you! <laughs> uh, I, hey, let, let me tell you something. This this has been a free out for you. This is get out of jail free <laughs> yeah. card. There I'll be go. out. Of, oh, I got to mind my business. My apology, baby. Let me go over here where I can mind my business. And I am so sorry. I should have never gotten in between this. Never, ever, Who never. am I mm. to do his damn job? Mm. Girl, mm. let me yeah. step off. Come on, Steve. Go. That's right. Mm. I love That's it, it right there. That's the answer. Mm-hmm. All right, My mama All right, raised CLO. me better than this. I am mm. so sorry. What Our mama. Say, Steve, I uh-huh. know better. <laughs> 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 away from me. Yeah. All right. Moving on to Sean in Tennessee. (laughs) Sean is a 40-year-old single man, and he lives in a townhouse next door to an older black lady. From day one, she harassed me, he says. She asked, how can I afford to live there? And she asked if I'm a drug dealer. I feel like I might need to curse her out. Can you offer a better solution for dealing with this evil old lady? Mm. Oh, yeah. That's a Sean. something to you. Sean, she wants you. <laughs> That's all this is, though. She, she wants, wants him? See, it reverses. Come on, CLO. See, as you get older, it reverses. <laughs> see, when you was young and a little boy and you liked the girl, you picked on her, pulled her hair, all this uh, here, mess with yeah. her, push uh-huh. her, you know. Yeah. And when you get old, mm-hmm. it's the same harassing. <laughs> it's when just on the duck. What you doing over here? You must, you must be a drug dealer up in here. <laughs> what? what you need to do is slide over there with some weed Come on. and sit down with him. <laughs> Take some edibles. Come on. And sit down with him and make new friends. Oh, Break that back. And she'll be all right. Uh-huh. Now, I already know she ain't fine because he would have put that in the letter. Oh, yeah. okay. She oh, okay. looked like an old evil ass woman. <laughs> Sometimes you got to do unfine things, though, Unc. Sometimes you got to. No, I don't, I don't, huh? I'm not a fan of that. I don't, you know, I don't like. I ain't, what? Yeah, I ain't that. never slept with nobody that wear a house coat. I ain't never done that. <laughs> and rollers. Oh, <laughs> just a house coat. <laughs> oh boy, you missing out. You ain't never had a sugar apron, but you missing out, boy. <laughs> no, I ain't never been with nobody wear a girdle. <laughs> <laughs> not spank. Girdle. Spanks, yeah. Girdle. Uh, Spanks, I got like, a problem. don't hate on Spanks. Girdle, okay. though. You got girdle on. How old are you? I ain't never had girdle. to wait. I ain't had nobody cinnamon pantyhose blend in with the beige carpet before. <laughs> oh, my. You ain't never had. You ain't never had nobody with their pantyhose tied right there above the knee. You ain't never had nobody <laughs> like that. Uh-uh. <laughs> I ain't never did it. I ain't, I ain't never had a woman that what? could put her breast in her apron pockets. <laughs> That's never been that attractive to me. <laughs> we got to go, crazies. Coming up at the top of the hour, entertainment news and more ignorance. You know where you are. <laughs> Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> Back after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Former President Barack Obama announced that uh, he has tested positive for COVID-19 with his symptoms limited to a scratchy throat. I've had a scratchy throat for a couple of days, but I'm feeling fine. Otherwise, Obama, who is 60, wrote on Twitter, Michelle and I are grateful to be vaccinated and boosted, and she has tested negative. Mm, good. 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 Very good. 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 good news. Good news. Good yep. News. Mm-hmm. All the black He looks healthy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. He always look good. He, he, yeah, he looks good. Even, yeah. All right. In other entertainment news, Steve, listen carefully to this one, and guys, because uh, Kanye is just <laughs> all right. He's beefing now with D.L. Hughley. Okay, after D.L. accused Kanye of stalking his ex Kim Kardashian, uh, Ye took aim at D.L. He wrote, "I am the glitch, D.L. God does not like you. You have no favor. Your family hates you." I would hate to be related to someone who used to be famous. Now you're just known as a broke pawn. At least Oprah got billions, allegedly, in in uh, quotations. Come on, leftists. Y'all got to do better than DL. This yay. Bring the real smoke, baby. Show your real face. In another post, Kanye suggested that he might be paying DL a personal visit soon. He wrote, DL lives in Calabasas? Yo, God is good. So then DL responded, this is crazy, right? So then, wait, listen to what DL said. DL responded, hmm, ain't it weird that Kanye supposedly has all of the goons who will kill for him, but will not get his prescriptions filled? (laughs) Here's a thought. Come on, King. He said, here's a thought. While you're on your way to kill me in Calabasas, how about drop by a CBS, CBS and pick up his Xanax? LOL. <laughs> wow, man. Yeah, but DL is Kane. taking the threat <laughs> yeah, very seriously. Yeah, look, yeah. man. Yeah. Come on, dog. Man. Pull up, man. You know, I done sat with you before, but I done sat with that brother many times. So pull up. It ain't what you want. I'm telling you. And if y'all, if y'all do get to scrapping, all my cash on DL, because you have no yeah. idea. Yeah. You have no idea. You've been a little, you've been a, uh, you've been a little, uh, uh, politically, Sheltered. socially conscious rapper. Uh, oh. mm-hmm. We from an ass whooping era. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not the whole Two totally era. different thing. <laughs> yeah, we from a whole nother era. Huh? Yeah, yeah. When you can come out to my house in Calabasas. <laughs> yeah. Mm, he yeah, lives yeah, in Calabasas. Yeah, come on, man. Back back up. Yeah, is my guy. He I'm got, sorry. No, no, dog. He got he too much. Yeah, and you ain't got it. to call him a leftist because you ain't really no rightist. You ain't even really on the right. Dog. You're a yeah. wrongest, really. You're yeah. a wrongest. Come on, yay. We He's all good, wrongest. man. I don't know yeah. why you going at DL. Yeah. DL ain't your problem. Come on, no. leftist. You could do better than DL. This yay. Bring the real DL smoke, had a baby. life before these jokes, what? just Kanye. Just might want to check yeah. into that. Yeah. All right, we're moving and on. It's we're obvious we're... because you have billions, don't fix everything. Yeah, mm. exactly. Yeah, there you go, yeah. Steve. Good point. We, we got to move on to Will Smith. Don't, but okay. hold on one second. Don't go out okay. there by that man family. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you. Had to, he a different guy. This, I'd have been around him too many that, times. That what? Let's back that up. What? Dog. That I almost said, said it. it. I almost <laughs> said it. <laughs> Dog, listen to me. Don't, don't go out there. I'm, I'm just, He's taking the threat, Steve, against his family very seriously. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> We're segueing to, to Will Smith, okay? He told Gail King in an interview that there has never been infidelity in his marriage to Jada. Thought- Take a listen. Take a listen. You both have talked very candidly. It's a very famous story, infidelity in the marriage and how you navigated that, that yeah, time. Never, there's never been infidelity in our marriage. Never been infidelity in the marriage? Never. Jada and I talk about everything and we have never surprised one another with anything ever so the, oh, what does that mean okay. so what that mean okay. so you so told means... each other what you were getting ready to do is that what that so means so then it's not infidelity it's, it's true it's, yeah it's an open marriage then yeah so that's what i got out of that yeah what's in the water in california it's something in this yeah. water what is it it's something that. come on steve what if marjorie ever come in and tell me <laughs> Entanglement. What she fitting to do? Uh-huh. <laughs> this story gonna take a very ugly turn. <laughs> <laughs> a hard left. This, this story has uh, lawyers and case numbers and filings <laughs> yeah. and pleadings. And, Police reports. Yeah, Police, Police pictures. Report. It's yeah. gonna be Object. Yellow tape. <laughs> it's gonna be all kind of stuff involved in this story. <laughs> I, we probably won't even make it to Gail King. <laughs> can we play that again, it? though? Can we play? Can we play it again? Let's play that again. You both have talked very candidly. It's a very famous story, infidelity in the marriage, and how you navigated that. That yeah, time. never. There's never been infidelity in our marriage. Never been infidelity in the marriage. Never. 
Jada and I talk about everything and we have never surprised one another with anything ever. That's now that right there. That, no, no, no. Let me tell you something. Hats off to Will Smith. I take my hat. Dog, ride your life. <laughs> That's Don't it? Give, dog. He's your leader, Steve. Will. <laughs> big, big Willie Smith, your boy Steve Harvey, give you 1,000%. That's the story you going with. Don't you let Gail King talk you off the <laughs> ground. <laughs> never, <laughs> never <laughs> been an infidelity now. Not a damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. There you have it. Coming up we in 20 minutes after the hour. Listen to me. <laughs> Coming up in 20 minutes after Living the hour. Living away more. from me. Yeah, more of the Steve Harvey Come Morning on. Show, and we'll talk with the U.S. Surgeon General, Dr. Vivek Murthy, right after <laughs> this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Hey, everybody. Our distinguished guest this morning uh, started to be a family member. He's on the show again. This is the... 21st Surgeon General of the United States. And since we're in uh, year two of the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, he's joining us with some information on what's most important right now. Uh, Getting boosted is a top priority as mass, as all of these mass mandates are changing. So we're happy to have him give us uh, an update this morning. Please welcome to the show, Dr. Vivek Murphy. Welcome. Well, Good, morning. Good morning. Good yes. morning. Good morning. Thanks so much for having me back. No, man, thank you for coming because you really help get the facts out for a lot of our listeners. You know, because like we we're talking about, you know, we're in the second year of this pandemic and the COVID vaccines for children under five have now been approved. But uh, many of the vaccinated parents uh, have not gotten their youngest children vaccinated. Let's talk about it. Why is that, sir? Well, it's a great question, Stephen. And I'll tell you right now, we've got vaccines for kids who are five and up. And, you know, I wanted my kid and his five, actually my son. And so I was able to go go ahead and get him vaccinated. But we, we still have the majority of parents with kids five to 11 who haven't gotten their children vaccinated yet. And we are still waiting for a vaccine for kids under five. I want everyone out there to know we're, that the, the FDA and all folks in government are working as hard as they can to make sure we get that vaccine as soon as possible. It, we have to wait for that data to come in, and it's not quite in based on what the companies are telling us right now. But as soon as it is, we will get that data evaluated. We'll make sure we have a vaccine for kids under five. But part of the reason I think we, we still have so many kids who are not vaccinated is I think there are more parents who need to to hear the message about why this is so important. And I know some parents are, have questions about, is this safe? Is it really necessary for my child? Here's what I would say to that. Number one, these vaccines have proven to be very safe uh, in kids. Uh, number two, in terms of are they effective? Yes, they've also shown to be particularly effective at the most important job, which is to keep your child out of the hospital and to save their life. Some kids who are vaccinated may still get, uh, you know, infections that are mild. But again, the most important job, the vaccine, save your life, keep you out of the hospital. And finally, is it necessary? I would say yes. And here's why. Because we've lost hundreds of kids to COVID in the last couple of years. Uh, We know that even though kids do better than older adults, uh, they still get severely ill. We've had thousands of kids who have been hospitalized. And when you go to the hospitals, you talk to the doctors about those children, they'll tell you the vast majority of hospitalized children have not been vaccinated. So for all these reasons, uh, you know, to protect your child, to protect people around them, because they can also spread the infection if they get it, please do vaccinate your child. It's what I did for my child, and it's what I hope you'll consider for your kid as well. Well, hey, listen, uh, that's great information because it helps dispel the stuff. Uh, we're going to be right back uh, with uh, more with Dr. Vivek Mur- Murphy. And we're going to talk about uh, something that was said on CNN uh, the other, uh, last week to kind of clear that up for everybody. We'll be right back with Dr. Vivek Murphy. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, we're back, everybody, and our special guest this morning is the 21st uh, Surgeon General of the United States, uh, Dr. Vivek Murthy, and uh, we were talking we're talking about the vaccine this morning. And, uh, Doctor, let me ask you this, because last week on CNN, you stated that there's been misinformation that has had a profound effect and impact on COVID-19 and our response. How do you plan to turn this around? 
See, this has been a profound problem during this pandemic, and we all know that there's always misinformation circulating about something, right? We encounter misinformation on the internet, on social media. Sometimes we get in text threats from our friends. But something's different uh, now, which is at the speed and the scale and really the sophistication with which this misinformation is spreading has really increased during COVID. And the consequence of that has been that many people have, have been turned away uh, from uh, things like vaccines or, or treatments that could save their lives. Some people have even been led to believe that COVID's not real, and we know it's real. Um, so how are we going to address it? So we, we've got to do a few things. You know, back in July, I issued a Surgeon General's advisory on addressing health misinformation. A few months later, I issued a, a community toolkit that has concrete, tangible tools people can use to identify the misinformation and to address it in their lives. So we're going to need individuals, each of us, uh, to raise the bar on what we share. Sometimes we'll share information that seems like it's legitimate. We don't actually check the sources. But if you check the sources, you're not sure if something is coming from a credible scientific source, then don't share it because it might be misinformation. We're also working with technology companies and urging them uh, to take steps to help reduce the spread of misinformation on their platforms. That's the place where we're seeing uh, so much of this spread, and that's where people are telling us they're mm-hmm. encountering misinformation, mm-hmm. is on social media. So, you know, we want people to be able to say what they want to say, do what they want to do, but you know, these platforms also have a responsibility to make sure that they're not causing harm to people's health, and we're urging them to step up and take responsibility for what's happening on their platforms. So those are some things that we're doing. Finally, I'll just say we also believe that healthcare uh, providers, doctors, nurses, others who are trusted in their community, they have such a vital role to play right now. Uh, they've already done so much for us during the pandemic, but we want to make it easier for them to have their voice out there in the community so people can hear directly from people they know and trust who are credible sources. You know, the, the pandemic is also affecting the mental health of both young and old. You know, you got loneliness, you got isolation. It can be significant problems for a lot of Americans because of COVID. What are some of the ways to combat that? Steve, I'm so glad you raised that because this is the invisible toll of the pandemic. Is the impact on our mental health and well-being. And the thing is, all of us have been impacted in some way. Uh, if you, whether you struggle with mental health concerns before the pandemic or not, it's really strained uh, many people's sense of well-being. It's led to greater rates of anxiety and depression and loneliness uh, among kids and adults. Uh, and so here's what we've got to do to, to address this. I think number one, we've all got to realize that there is nothing wrong with you fundamentally, nothing that says that you're broken or that uh, that you're flawed in some way if you're struggling with your mental health. We all do at some point. We may not talk about it, uh, but it's if you struggle with your mental health, that's more evidence of being human uh, than anything else because this is a part of the human experience, and there's nothing wrong with reaching out and asking for help. Number two, we've got to make sure that help is there for people uh, when, when they struggle. Now, we have work to do in increasing access to mental health services and treatment, uh, in this country, it's not as easy to find a therapist, to find a counselor if you need it. And we've got to change that. And it's one of the reasons why President Biden has made big investments in getting counselors into schools and why he also talked about a broader mental health agenda that we're going to work on for the country to increase access to care. So you don't have to be a therapist or a psychiatrist to be able to help somebody with their mental health. You just need to be able to show up in their life with an open heart, with love and compassion, with the willingness to listen to them. Uh, without judgment, and to be there and to support them. Uh, That is worth its weight in gold, Steve. Our friendships, our relationships, these are the foundation on which we build our mental health and our overall well-being. I believe that, sir. Absolutely well said. And Thank you for sharing that personal information. Uh, That's Dr. Vivek Murthy, everybody, 21st uh, Surgeon General of the United States. We'll be back with more Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, right about four minutes after, it's my strawberry letter for today. The subject, right situation with the wrong man. Mm, we'll get into that in just a bit. But right now, it is time for the nephew and today's prank phone call. Neff, what yeah. do you have for us today? What's on Come the on, menu, give it baby? To me. give, give it to me. Let me get you a little sip of this stupid right here. Come on, get a little <laughs> sip of this stupid. Mm-hmm. All okay. right, make you feel good. Now, listen, I know... My titles might throw you sometimes, and this one right here, you know, these things happen. You have to be, you have, you have to understand that things happen. All right. Okay. So today's title is, "I dropped your wife." Okay, I huh? dropped. What? 
it, 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 can, it can happen, Carla. I dropped no, your wife. Like no, it can't. You dropped now, we're trying to make sure everything all right, but hey, I dropped your wife. All right, okay. fellas, buckle up. Hold on. Here it is. Cat dog, let's go. Hello? Hello, I'm trying to reach Tony. This is Tony. Tony, how you doing? This is Nephew Tommy. <gasps> hey, Nephew Tommy. <laughs> I can't believe you're calling me. Oh, my God. <laughs> You sent an email in to prank your arm. Um... Yes. Oh, my God. I sent that, like, months ago. I didn't think you were going to call me. Yes. I'm calling you now. How long y'all been married? Eight years. Okay. Eight years. He, he's, that's my heart. Okay. Let me ask you something. What makes your husband just go off? What can I do that you know oh. that's, a, that's a button for him that you don't want to push? Anything that has to do with me. Let me tell you, he is crazy about me. <laughs> if anybody uh-huh. messes with me, if anybody tries to go off on me, he will lose it. Okay, okay. Oh, what are we going to do? What? Are we, I'm so excited. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> All right. Okay, you know what? You know what? Okay, check this out. Okay. Can you click over on a three-way? Can you call him? Uh, okay, I can call him from my phone. But you're going to be on the phone, right? Yeah, I want, I want him to think okay. that I got your phone. Okay. I tell you what, you just click over and get him on the line. Just click over. So when you click back, you can't say nothing else. You got to be quiet. Okay. Because at the end, I'm going to let you talk to him, okay? Okay, hold on. Tommy, are you there? I'm here. Okay, it's ringing. All right, you hit mute or something, okay? Okay, okay, okay. Hey, what's up, baby? Uh, no, this, this, how you, is this, is this Darren? Yeah, this Darren, who is this? Uh... Hey, we got a bit of a situation with, with Tony, yeah, man. Yeah, we got a situation for real. You, what, this is my wife's phone. Who is this? This, uh, actually, Why man, we, 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 bro? Who, who is this? We're trying to get, uh, Tony actually twisted her ankle, man, so we got to get her to the uh, emergency room and get her checked out. She twisted her ankle. How'd she, how she twist? Wait, 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 wait. Back up. Who, who did you say? Who is this? How did Tony twist her ankle? Actually, she, she, she fell. And... All right, man, look, look. My wife is with her mom right now. Who, 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 and who are you? How did she twist her ankle? And why are you calling me? Why isn't her mother or somebody calling me? Who is this? You never told me uh, your name, bro. No, I'm, I'm a friend, man. She didn't fall. I actually dropped her. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. How, how, you, how did you drop her? What, what do you mean you dropped her? We had a couple drinks at the hotel, man, and she... Oh, she... Hey, wait, wait, wait. Hotel? What the hell you mean a hotel? My wife's supposed to be over her mom's house. Now, you calling me from her phone talking about you dropped her? Y'all at some hotel? What, what, why y'all even at a hotel? What, do you, what the hell are you talking about a hotel, bro? Where the f- is my wife? Where is Tony? Why, well, why ain't Tony on the phone? Why hey, dude, Tony you got to calm, you gotta calm down, no, man. No, you got to calm down. We in a situation, uh, right? You calling me from my wife's phone, telling me she hurt, you dropped her, y'all at a hotel, she's supposed to be at her f- mom's house? Bro, where is my wife, man? She's it. Tony, I got it. I got it. Just hang on. So, Tony, I got put my wife on the f- phone, man. Hey, dude, just, I need you to calm down, man. No, she no, in no, 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 I need you to this, man. No, no, no. You talking about y'all about to go to an emergency room, you dropped my wife, y'all at a hotel. No, get put my on the phone before your be in the emergency room. Hey, man, listen, you got to calm down. Tony already embarrassed man, look, about that. I don't even know who the hell you are. You still ain't told me your name. Put Tony on the phone, bro. I'm a, listen, man, you got to chill out, man. I'm just a friend, okay? Hey, man, hey, I'm a tell friend, me, but... I tell you what, I tell you what, in the emergency room, tell me where y'all at. I'll come to the hotel. i get my own wife and take her to wherever she needs to be. No, tell I, me where I, you I, at. We, we, as soon as Tony get dressed, man, I'm going to get her there, okay? What? As soon as she get dressed? What do you mean as soon... Hey, man, real talk, dog, where y'all at, man? Where you? Put Tony on the phone, man. I'm not putting Tony on you too high rate, man. man. Why are you screaming and hollering, dude? I swear to God, I swear to God, if I find out where y'all at, I'm going to come over. It's going to be one for you and Tony. Hey, hey, man, where y'all at, bro? I'm, I'm cool. Where y'all at? Tell me where y'all at. No, no, no. i tell you what, man, I'm going to get Tony's uh, uh, ankle taken care of, and we'll get somebody to drop her back off at the house, okay? I, I, I'll, take, I'll, I'll drop her off at the house, man. Just tell me where y'all at. I want to come get my wife. I want to make sure she get the treatment that she need, bro. Tell me where y'all at. Don't go nowhere. I want you to be there when I come get her. Don't go nowhere. Where y'all at? I can't do it. I, I mean, we didn't. Put, on, put, put Tony on the phone, man. Put, put my wife hey, on man, the phone. I'm not. Listen, Let dude. me talk to my wife, bro. Hey, man, it's the reason why I'm calling, man. She embarrassed about all of this. And now, she going to be more than embarrassed. When, hey, okay, it's cool. Ain't, tell ain't no need to be embarrassed. I love her, man. That's my girl, man. Let me let me holler at my wife, bro, please. No, That's all no, I'm asking. No, 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 no. I already Give know, man. Give my wife a phone, bro. Listen, dude. Hey, man, look, dog, real talk. You still ain't telling me who the f*** you are, dog. All I know is you calling me talking about you in some f***ing hotel with my wife and Look, let me tell you something. Don't, don't let that leg, that ankle, whatever you say is wrong with my wife, get your 
whoops. Dog, I'm telling you, when I find out who you are, I'm busting your Put my wife on the phone, man. That's all. That's my last time asking you, dog. I promise this. Hey, hey, man, what? But see, man, you too all right, man. You too all right. Put my wife on the phone, bro. That's all I'm saying. You got to leave town. That's what I'm saying. You got to leave town, my man. You got to leave town. You want to talk to to Tony? Do you want to talk? Let Tony decide if she want to talk to you or not, okay? Yeah, yeah. Put her, yeah, let her decide. Tony, do you want Do you want to, do you want to talk to him, Tony? Don't even ask him. Hey, man, you phone. Hey, 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 hey you shut up, man. Before. We'll see what Tony want to do. Tony, get your Tony. on the phone. Hey, man. Put, hey, hey, pull up, bro. Hey, pull you, up. I don't even know you, man. Put on the phone. You, you scared to tell me your name. Tony, you want to talk to him? Hell yes, you want to talk to me, man. I don't even know why you keep asking those dumb questions. Get on the phone. I'll pay okay. the Phone bill. Tony, Tony, here, here she is, man. Yeah. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. Where you at? Baby. Listen, who are you are with, you Tony? With? Hey, Tony, look, I ain't good, baby. Hey, I don't have time for games. Where you at baby. and who you with? That's all you got to tell me. Baby, just calm down. I got something to where tell you, Where are you, Tony? Tony, baby, where are you at? listen to me. Baby, you got to yeah, listen, listen to me. I'm listening. Are you listening? Yes. Listen to me real carefully, okay? Where are you at, Tony? Baby, are you listening to me? Yes, I'm listening. Baby, you just got pranked by nephew Tony. <laughs> I'm laughing right now. <laughs> I love you. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay, girl. You, you hurry up on home. That's cool. All right, you got me. You got me. Huh? You proud of that? What? I am. <laughs> what am I proud? That's some of your best work. What? No, what? I am elated of my work. <laughs> Ooh, he was mad. He was hot. <laughs> Woo! He came in hot. <laughs> oh, oh my! You got God. my wife phone, and you own it. I don't. Oh, oh! Hold on, Tony. <laughs> I was nervous all the way through that one. I didn't know hey, how man. that one was gonna end. Hey, just, I ain't even mad no more, man. What do my wife at? Let me just y'all just. Yeah. Oh, oh, I know that. I know that <laughs> trick right there. I know that <laughs> trick. No, no, no. Right, no, I'm really? fine. I'm cool. I'm cool. Just put my wife on the phone. No, we good. We good. But, but I want you to be there when I get that though. I need you to be right. there too. She got him fine. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. <laughs> what? Ridiculous. Who the hell is that? I'm for real, Neff. That's a great stupid feeling this morning. On that great getting up stupid, it's the nephew. What you say, Steve? Hey, Tommy, let me ask you a question. Were you <laughs> overjoyed at that? Overjoyed, over... Well, uh, over, say, say, well, uh, ex- exhilarated. What, 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 what big word can I give? I was all that excited. <laughs> what? That's the well, big word. All well, that. Well, well, <laughs> most big word, most words is big to you. <laughs> yeah. I said excited. <laughs> Woo, that's excited. A lot. Yeah, Woo, that's ex- another big ex- one. Ex- excited. I was excited. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that one. Excited. You got you got to admit, Unc, that was home run right there, boy. That right there was ignorance at its best, man. Damn. Put a stamp on my stupid for me, man. That's all I want from you. Give me credibility mm. of my stupidity. All I right. knew that before uh, you nephew. got on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we got to move on to the strawberry letter that's coming up next. The subject is right situation with the wrong man. We'll get into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And listen, if you need advice on relationships, dating, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to steveharveyfm.com and click Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here, right now. And you never know, it could be yours. Could be. Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is, the Strawberry Letter. Subject... Right situation with the wrong man. Dear Stephen Shirley, I'm a 29-year-old woman, and I've been dating the greatest man on earth for about four months. I wanted to do things right this time because I could see myself marrying this man. He said he knew I was going to be his wife the moment he laid eyes on me. It was his idea to wait to have sex, and it was him that spoiled me with gifts, moonlit walks, and home-cooked meals. He said he wanted me to fall in love with his personality and enjoy spending time with him before we even got into having sex. Everything was going so fast, and I wanted to be with him all the time. So as soon as he asked me to move in, I made plans to make it happen. Then one day, my intuition kicked in, and I hit the pause button. 
I decided I needed to have sex, see him naked, or at least rub up on him before I went any further with him. I was in the habit of sleeping with the guy soon after I met him, so this was odd for me, (laughs) but I was trying to do things differently this time. I at least needed to see it. When I started grabbing for it playfully, he would pull away and tell me to take it easy. He always slept on his stomach, so I couldn't touch it. One Saturday morning, I decided to get a bobby pin and unlock the bathroom door while he was in the shower and pretend to be a sexy, naked burglar. I had planned to seduce him, and it worked. Well, almost. He was shocked, and he was amused. I was not. I jumped in the shower and got the worst possible outcome. This man falls short, very short, of what Mm. I was expecting. It was quite an ordeal in that shower, and nothing about it was good. Now I'm planning to move in with a man that doesn't measure up down there. Would I be silly to leave him over this? Well, I mean, you know, what can we say? You have a problem because this is not what you want. And we can't can't fix this for you. Uh, Only you can fix this. Um, Mm. And, of course, that depends on how important all of this is to you and what you want. It should be important, though, because sex is vital in relationships Uh and in marriage. um, And you guys are planning to marry one day. Yeah. Um, But again, what do you want? Do you want a a, a great man in every aspect except in the bedroom or a man Uh who knows how to make uh, you his sex slave but uh, treats Uh you like crap everywhere else? Those are your kind of your choices. Um, Does size matter or does character matter? Will you eventually cheat on him? You know you. You know what you can and what you cannot live with so Mm -hmm. if you don't think you're in this for the long haul which includes living together and eventually marriage and of course sex with this man who you say falls short uh it's better to end it now than to ignore the problem and move in with him i think it's selfish if you don't let him know how you really feel he's probably thinking he's got it going on because no one cares enough to tell him he's bad in bed uh i i do understand and it's much easier to walk away but if he's a good person tell him and uh teach him how to love you course you know teach, you can't do anything about the size mm. steve T- teach him with what you just said teach him how to mm-hmm. love you my question is teach him with what <laughs> <laughs> we in a painting class and ain't got nothing but the hair on the brush we don't have a handle we just got brush hair. <laughs> we need to handle if we going to take the art class. Shirley, I listened to your answer, and I can't dispute anything you said, sweetheart, because you tried to help a person. I know going into this letter, I can't help her. <laughs> I'm telling you right off, I know nothing about this as a matter of fact i've had the direct opposite problem my entire damn life here we go so i hey sorry (laughs) uncle steve can't help you but let me try Mm -hmm. Uh, well i don't know if i'm gonna help you i'm just gonna point out a couple things you've been dating a great guy four months you want to do things the right way so you could see yourself marrying this man he told you he knew he was gonna be your wife, you was gonna be his wife the moment he saw you. It was his idea to wait to have sex, and it was him that spoiled me with guilt because he know <laughs> what the problem is, and he trying to get out in front of it. Let me spoil you with gifts. Don't worry about that sex thing. (laughs) (laughs) I want to marry you. Mm -hmm. I'm spoiling you with gifts. We going on moonlit walks. Yeah. We eating home cooked meals. You ain't got to cook a damn thing. I am your everything. Because in a minute, I ain't going to be a damn thing. (laughs) (laughs) One more time. One more time. One more time. I am going to be your everything. Because in Uh a minute, I ain't going to be a damn thing. (laughs) And he know it's coming. He said he wanted you to fall in love with his personality. Mm. What man says that? Mm. 
I want you to start it and fall in love with my personality. I ain't never said that. Said no one ever. Mm. Hell, I've been funny my whole life. You don't like my my personality. Go on and marry his dry ass then. <laughs> Well, when we come back, though, mm. the truth comes out. All right. Part two of Steve's response coming up at 23 minutes after the hour. Subject, right situation, wrong man. We'll get back into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right. Come on, Steve. Let's recap today's strawberry letter. The subject, right situation, wrong man. Lady been dating the greatest man on earth for about four months. Mm -hmm. Wanted to do things right this time because you could see yourself marrying this man. As a matter of fact, when he saw you, he said he knew he wanted you to be his wife. The moment he laid eyes on you. And it was his idea. Now, listen to this now. To wait to have sex. And it was him that spoiled me with gifts. The reason being is because he was willing to give you everything because in a minute, he wasn't going to be a damn thing. <laughs> that should have been the title. We're going to exchange Hilarious. everything for not a damn thing. Right. <laughs> oh, we on moonlit walks. Mm-hmm. This boy cooking food at the house. He done probably went to chef school. He done had to hurry up and develop all kinds of skills. Mm -hmm. Said he wanted you to fall in love with his personality and enjoy spending time with him before y'all got into having sex. Why? Because that ain't going to be a damn thing. <laughs> so fall in love with my wonderful personality, these mean lit walks, all this cooking, spoiling you with gifts, diamonds. Everything was going fast. I Diamond. wanted to be with him all the time. So then when he asked you to move in with him, you made plans to make it happen. Then one day, this thing that all women have that they oftentimes ignore, this thing called intuition kicked in. And I hit the pause button. I decided I needed to have sex, see him naked, or at least rub up on him before I went any further. <laughs> Slipping away from me. Yeah. <laughs> So ignorant. Why are you so stupid? That damn Jodeci <laughs> on Earthquake's IG page. It's hilarious. <laughs> really? So I decided it I needed is. to have sex, see him naked, or at least rub up on him before I went any further. Because, mm -hmm. see, I was in the habit of sleeping with a guy soon after I met him, so this was odd for me. What? <laughs> You know, I usually had my, uh, you know, blankish tendencies was out, but I decided not to have my <laughs> blankish tendencies out, you know. Mm -hmm. I at Come least on. needed to see it. Mm -hmm. I started grabbing for it playfully. <laughs> he would pull away mm. and tell me to take it easy. Because mm. you don't realize you grabbing for nothing. You don't know that you damn near gonna have to tear the fabric off my pants to discover anything. <laughs> Would you stop? <laughs> I ain't got nothing for you right now. Even when mm. it get ready, it ain't gonna look ready. <sighs> it simply means the word a tin hut simply means, huh? <laughs> yeah, but the, that's, that's, your man got a, <laughs> Big and Small got a problem. I'm just telling you what I know. <laughs> Big and small got a problem. See, he big with gifts, personality, cooking, uh -huh. moonlit mm -hmm. walks, biggie. But he's small down there. Mm -hmm. He would always sleep on his stomach so I couldn't touch it. Oh, I can't sleep on my stomach. That's one of the reasons I can't sleep on my stomach. Mm. Oh, really? Oh, it'll throw mm. my back out. Every chance you get, you bring that up. It, it'll right. Be like, it'll be like sleeping on a little hill. <laughs> okay. I'm you made your know. point. No, yes. I'm not, not yet. <laughs> so he was in the shower. Mm -hmm. I wanted to go in there naked and pretend to be a sexy burglar. I was going to seduce him, and it worked. Well, almost. almost. He was shocked and amused. I was not. I jumped in the shower and got the worst possible outcome. This man falls short, very short, of what I was expecting. 
It was quite an ordeal in that shower, and nothing about it was good. Now I'm planning to move in with a man that don't measure up down now. Would I be silly to leave him over this? Well, Shirley said you got to measure all the stuff that he has and what he don't mm. have, and if sex measure. is important. <laughs> I've never heard these things right here. I'm used to hearing stuff like, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Okay. These are things I've heard. <laughs> Enough already. I've heard stuff like, Lord have mercy. Mm. <laughs> I've, I've heard stuff like, you got to stop. Mm. You got to stop. <laughs> I've heard, how much more? Mm. <laughs> have you now? Just tell me how much more. <laughs> I've heard, I can't take all this. <laughs> <laughs> this letter is not about you. I've heard, give me, give, give me, give me a minute. Give me a minute. <laughs> Wait, you must prefer things over things. Mm. That's what we mm. dealing with here. <laughs> things over thing. Or you can get thing and nothing. <laughs> All right, Steve. You what got you to get? make a decision. Things mm-hmm. over things or the thing over things. It's her decision. That's for sure. Thank you, Steve. Post your comments on today's Strawberry Letter at Steve Harvey. I FM come with it all. And Facebook. Or you can Check out the Strawberry Letter. And just walk in the room and say to him, Hi! <laughs> Check out the <laughs> Strawberry no Letter man, podcast man. on demand. <laughs> Coming up in 46 minutes after the hour, Junior and Sports Talk, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, Kim Kardashian is receiving some backlash for for her advice to women. In a recent interview with Variety Magazine, Kim said, I have the best advice for women in business. Get your blanking A up and work. It seems like nobody wants to work these days. Well... After saying that, it prompted a whole lot of backlash for Kim. People were posting comments on social media. One follower said, so there are women out here who work really hard and those with fewer economic advantages than you have are not just working hard enough and they are to blame for their misfortune? Question mark. Multiple people posted, Kim, you grew up in Beverly Hills with successful parents. You are out of touch. Have several seats. Uh, wh- what, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> they let her have it. They worm, buddy. <laughs> yeah, they let her have it. So do you think Kim's mar- remarks were insensitive, Steve? What What do you think? What do you well, think? she just didn't take the time to think it out. Mm-hmm. When, you, when you make a, a broad sweeping remark about women and the problem mm-hmm. with most women, which mm-hmm. is not a true statement. Most women are really, really working their tails off. Yeah. I mean, yes. putting it all in. Yes. Uh, most women, a lot of women are trying with everything, especially with the resources that they have, which yes. will take a little bit longer. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm here to tell you that. When yeah. you come from nothing to turn that into something, it's a longer journey than if you start with something, turning, it, turning something into some more. Is yeah. way easier than turning nothing into something. That's now that right, right there, that's Steve. Right. That's, that's it. Right. The starting that, line. That, that Trust part. me. Right that there. part. Mm-hmm. When you ain't below the O. Yes. See, mm-hmm. if we could all start equally, yes. that'd be a great conversation. Mm-hmm. Even mm-hmm. playing field. Even. Mm-hmm. But we don't get to start even. Nope. Most of us are below O for sure. Mm-hmm. And, and and you know, like first. First, man, when you're just trying to get to the surface so you can breathe, skip getting on the starting line. Mm-hmm. I just, I'm just i trying to tread water so I can get my nose above so I can breathe. That's an accomplishment right there. That's why Amen you can't judge that. success yeah. by mm-hmm. where a person is in life. You judge your success by where a person started, started. in life. That's what I'm mm-hmm. saying. See, it's the starting point, man. Mm-hmm. That's the yeah. cold part about this, man. That's why, man... You gotta have people with stories to tell, you know, mm-hmm. like, yeah. like like Donald Trump. Uh, I became oh, a billionaire because my dad gave all of us a million dollars. True statement. Mm-hmm. True statement that he made. Yeah. But that's a million. Oh, but here's the part that he didn't left out. When his father passed and left all that money, those children split that money too. 
Right. Mm-hmm. Rumor right. says, wow. rumor says that he left eight hundred million and each child got two hundred million. I am okay. here to do that t- right there. I'm right here there. to tell you that I can make it from there. Yeah, you right, think? That's right. good news, right? Yeah. <laughs> but now, if you're from the background and you don't even have, you don't have any money. Mm-hmm. You don't have a parent that can give you money. That let's say they can give you just love money. and guidance. Yeah, mm-hmm. and because they don't have money, right. that's it. That's right. all they can give you: is love and guidance. Your parents, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Now, that's it. now you got to go from there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Ain't nothing wrong with that, but that's a different starting point mm-hmm. than yeah, your daddy's a lawyer and your mama's a celebrity. That's a little bit mm-hmm. different starting point, and I just think she missed it. I think Kim was trying to be encouraging, mm-hmm. but I think it just, because she really is a cool person. Yeah, it, she seems to be. And we respect yes. her. Uh-huh. We respect their hustle, the Kardashians' Absolutely. hustle. Absolutely. Nobody's mm-hmm. hating on that. But when she said that part, it's like, you've never been without. So you can't judge that starting point. So how would point. you know? Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah Steve. Yeah, it's that's starting it. Point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That starting right. point is everything, doggy. Ain't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep, 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 I got to yep. tell you, boy. Woo! Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause that damn below that. zero, woo! Yeah. That's a hard ass hole right there to come out of. You're right. You're right. Uh, we'll have more of uh, the Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up at 20 minutes after. Right after this, you're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. So, um, got a question for everyone. How are you doing with the spring forward and the time and all that? Have you adjusted to the time? Are you still off a little bit? Oh, Steve, here's something for you. Take take a listen to this real quick. Time is slipping away from me. Yeah. <laughs> you don't even understand. That's my jam. <laughs> Joe to see. <laughs> Steve and Junior. <laughs> Slipping away from me. You've been singing that all morning. Because that's my jam. (laughs) Dog. (laughs) See, Junior's problem was, he asked me, Junior says, Unc, why do you put so much feeling into it? It's not the note that matters. It's the no. emotion that's <laughs> applied. <laughs> and I can, these are professional singers. This is Casey yeah. and JoJo. Play it again for me, Dave. Time <laughs> is slipping away from me. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> What's the odds? Uh, that has nothing to do with the note <laughs> or the key. <laughs> so when I'm in there, <laughs> Slipping away from me. <laughs> That's the feeling, man. Oh, oh, my spring God. forward, All right. baby. Thank you for uh, Casey and JoJo for clearing that up for me. Yeah. <laughs> That's Junior's group. Junior's group oh, coming up at 33 minutes tour. after the hour. <laughs> yeah, and they sound good on tour. We'll have a round of Would You Rather right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Time for Would You Rather. Would you rather eat rotten eggs or drink sour milk? Don't I'm matter. A, I'm, I'm yeah. puking all that up, man. Jesus. I'm going to go and go with that sour milk. That's that's close to buttermilk. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. yeah. My, my, my system would take that. That rotten ass egg, you got problem, dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Junior. What you got? Yeah, mm. I'm going to go with the sour milk. I can't. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No. Okay. I've had bad milk before. I poured it on cereal before and knew it was sour, but that's all we had. <laughs> yeah, that's all you had, huh? Yeah, had to and eat. I'd be damned if I was going to let my crazy ass daddy see me rake that in the trash. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Food. Oh, you throwing away food now. Right. <laughs> oh. Right. Oh, you right. buying groceries. Yeah. Oh, you got <laughs> money. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, moving on. Did we hear from the nephew? He- Wait, no, no, you didn't. And move on. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta, no, pick one. Sour well, you milk get your right ass in that trash with that seal. I tell you what. <laughs> That's what you better do. I'm back on your dad. On, Sour milk. Right I guess I'm, 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 I got to follow them because I, I don't want the egg. I got to go with mm-hmm. the milk. I, this, no, I, okay. Anyway, it is. I'm going to throw up on you. There it is. Okay. Go ahead. 
All right, would you rather date someone with their ex's name tattooed on their chest or date someone whose ex lives next door? Oh, wait, say that oh, again. I'm going with oh, wait that a minute, chest. What? Say that again. Would you rather date someone that has their ex's name tattooed on their chest or would you rather date someone whose ex lives next door? Ah, I'm going with the chest. Yeah. I'm going to see you from behind yeah. more than I am going from the front anyway. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Are you sleepy? Because you just fine <laughs> off. Wow. <laughs> fine <laughs> off. <laughs> you asked me. <laughs> Steve. Think about your answers. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm just going. I'm not pulling up every day and he right there. <laughs> yeah. that, that's the going to turn into a fight. Talking about, talking about Lawrence, next door, Lawrence. Yeah, not doing that. <laughs> Floyd, right. Floyd, stay right next door. Uh huh. Good right coming next over door. here. No, nah, you can have that tattoo. I just, I just, I just miss. I probably misread it anyway. You know, I get names <laughs> wrong anyway. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right, one yeah. more, <laughs> one more. Would you rather get stuck in an elevator with your ex, or with your partner and their ex? Mm. Ah. Mm. Nah, I'll go with the partner. Oh, I'd rather, get stuck, I'd rather get stuck in there with my partner and her ex. I can whoop yeah. his ass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can do that. At least we what, get something out of this. What you say, Junior? Yeah, I'm saying I'm with Unc. I'd rather do that. Okay. <laughs> ain't no the, the okay. All right. Mm-hmm. Nephew, stuck right, with your ex enough. in the elevator or with your partner and their ex? Come on. Don't be difficult. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> say it. Eleva- Elevator with the ex. With your ex? <laughs> you scared? Oh, really? <laughs> Coming up in 49 minutes after the <laughs> last break of the day. And, and some closing remarks from the one and only Steve Harvey right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Here we are, last break of the day on this Tuesday. We want to say thank you to Dr. Vivek Murthy for um, coming by, the 21st Surgeon General of the United States, uh, keeping us updated on the COVID-19 situation in America. Always good to chat with him, Steve. Yeah. Yeah. Giving us facts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Uh, My closing remarks today um, is something that I had, I've learned, but I found a way to put it together this this weekend, you know, as I was sitting around thinking. And we've often talked about the, uh, on this show, I've always talked to you about uh, the law of attraction and how it works. And the law of attraction simply means the thing that you put out are the things you're going to get back. And it doesn't really matter if you believe in it or honor it or accept it. It's just the way it is. It's, it's a very simple thing. The law of attraction is real. It doesn't matter. It's like when I'm talking to people and I, somebody tells me they're an atheist. It's okay. Just because a person says there isn't a God, that don't mean it, that don't mean it ain't one. You know, you, you can take that line of thinking if you want to, it, it, that God is real. You may not choose to make it real in your life, Oh, but you will, because it's it, you just will. But that's not an argument here for me. Today I'm just talking about one principle. And I want you to start thinking about how you give. Because giving is one of the very, very important laws and principles of success. Giving is a universal law. You know, and the way you have to give is this, and this is what I've come to learn about it. When you give everybody, you have to give willingly. You have to give graciously. That's the way you have to give, willingly and graciously. You just give. If you see somebody on the street, you just give. If you see somebody in need, you just give. It ain't all time somebody asking you, but if they do ask and you got it to give, just give willingly and graciously. The, the, the why they need it, the what they're going to do, if you need it back and all like that, that's a different type of giving. Because I'm going to tell you something. If you have to think before you give and then you decide to give because they've answered certain questions, you're not actually giving anymore. You're trading. I hope you understand what I'm saying to you. If a person asks you for something, you got to think about it. And you got to work out terms and arrangements. That's not giving. That's trading. 
So don't get mad when the trade agreement is broken. I gave you this, I gave you that. No, that, that was a trade agreement. See, you, you, you've, lost, you've lost the genuine part of giving, which is willingly and graciously, because you turned it into a termed agreement. So that's not the same blessing, y'all. It's not the same blessing. Because those things that you've done for the least of these, so have you done unto me. I'm just paraphrasing a scripture. What God tried to help us to do is we have to give willingly and graciously when we can. Now, if you loan some person money, I'm not saying you're not supposed to loan. But when you loan the money, understand what it is. It's a trade agreement. I'm going to give you this. In return, I want that. And that's cool. Ain't nothing wrong with it. But it's not the same as giving. So when they don't give it to you, remember when you came to me and you needed this, I gave you this and I gave You didn't give it willingly. You gave it with an agreement. You were trading. And here's what I want you all to understand. And I had to explain this to an employee of mine. If you're not willing to do more for what you're being paid for, then you will never be paid more for what you are doing. I'm trying to tell you something now, and I need for you to hear me because this is an important thing because a lot of people are blocking a lot of blessings this way because they don't understand the importance of pouring your all into something, how it comes back to you. If you are not willing to do more for what you're being paid for, then you will never be paid more for what you are doing. That's a fact. You ain't got to like what Uncle Steve just said. You ain't got to want to believe in it. I ain't finna do all this down here. Okay. And you don't have to. I'm telling you, if you're on a job and you're doing just enough to get your check, then guess what your blessing is? Always going to be just enough. But the moment you become willing to do more for what you are being paid for, the moment you open up the windows of heaven and you will soon learn that you will be paid more for what you are doing. I had to learn that, and I'm so glad I did. I hope this is sinking in, man, because this is about truly about giving. Even on a job, you got to do your best. You got to be willing to do more for what you're being paid for, or you will never, ever be paid more for what you are doing. So you can quit looking at the CEO of United Way, why they make all that money. The salary, I read one year a long time ago, for the, and it's probably gone up, the salary for the CEO of uh, Red Cross, United Way, one of them, was $5 million a year. How they paying that man all that money? Maybe because he was doing more than he was supposed to do with the money and the time he was given. And so now he's being given more money for the time that he's giving. Does that make sense? It does to me. That's why basketball players make what they make. That's why the owners of teams makes what they make. Because at one point in life, one point in time, they did more than what they was being paid for. So now they get paid more for what they are doing. Mm, sound right to me. Y'all have a great day. Those are my closing remarks. God willing, we'll see y'all tomorrow morning. Hey, y'all, talk to God. He loved to hear from you. For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 